Ido, there's so much serendipity in the fact that this even got made. How did you find this? As It's just as astonishing, I think, as the way Kutaman found Samantha. <laughs> Thank you. It's uh, um, Actually, uh, I know Kutaman for uh, many years, and very for many years I, am all, I always want to do something inspired by his work. And uh, when he showed me the project that included uh, the songs of Samantha, I was like starting to play with the idea of making a film. And I was sure that I want to do this film in the beginning of uh, several musicians in, in different places around the world. All of them appear in uh, Kutiman's work uh, to document their life, of course, the moment of re revealing. Uh, but when he showed me Samantha, something really, I fell in love with her songs, with her honesty, with her directness, and I really wanted to, to know her, to meet her. And then I went to US um, and we got in touch uh, with Samantha and very fast we felt very comfortable with each other and I felt that, you know, and the same evening we met, we went to this open mic uh, evening, something like you saw in the film in New Orleans and I totally fell in love with New Orleans and this music, music scene and with Samantha and, and I had a strong feeling that this is what I want to do. But at that point, Samantha didn't know that Kutaman was working. No, on I, I was. I, I told her that I wanted to do a film about YouTube, YouTubers in different places around the world, a musician that upload the music and hope that people will see and maybe something will come out for me. And so, Kutaman, you've been doing these mashups for a while. Your work was at the Guggenheim, and then all of a sudden you run across this remarkable voice, this this very frank and honest face storytelling on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and did she, at, at that point you said, I have to do something with her? Or was she just one of many people that you were looking at and considering for your next piece? Um, actually, with, uh, with uh, her song, I started first with the music. I just, I did a big change in my life and I started this project, working on this project. And uh, well, I started with the music, so I had uh, a track ready and I was searching for a vocalist for it. And the track has a certain BPM and a certain scale, so it couldn't be any any vocalist. And then I searched for a few days, and then I found her, and I was uh, really amazed. And it actually made me want to start, um, want to do the whole album. And, and Samantha, for you, you had been putting these videos on YouTube, and finally you saw that people were listening in a big way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and what did that feel like? It was, I was at a point in my life where I was like down and just out of it, going running on autopilot. So for that to happen at that moment, it was great. It was beautiful. It was like I kept getting all these wonderful comments and for people to hear my voice, this song that I had for so long up there, it was amazing. I just felt like a surreal moment. But like I said, I didn't think beyond it. I just was like, this is dope, fresh sauce. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it was like, okay. So I didn't think like, what next? I just was like, this is, I always think like there's a beginning and an end. And it's like, okay, the song was out. It did good. Okay. They hear my voice and it's over. I didn't think beyond that. And Kudaman, you were looking for a voice, but you found a whole person out there. So uh, how did you feel <coughs> about that? Did you feel I'm watching something really intimate and should I be hearing this about this person when I'm looking for her voice, but seeing so much more of her? Um, I don't know. I just I just kind of virtually fell in love with her, you know? In a, like, yeah, for <laughs> real. Yeah. Like, uh, there, there was something, I don't know, there was something so real and honest about her. And I watched so many, you know, I spent so much time watching a lot of people singing. And and a lot of them, a lot of the times, are trying, you know, hi, I'm this and I'm that. And I am uh, try to look cool. Imitating other people. Yeah, and trying, you know, trying to be someone, someone else. And something about her honesty really caught me and I really fell in love with that. And Ido, how hard was this just mechanically and from an editing point of view? 
from the first it was very hard the distance you know um is israel new orleans it's like um i i uh, filmed myself most of the time and you know i really wanted to be there more so i was like every morning i remember i was uh waking up and watching uh, your instagram channel to see what's going on and then when she you didn't know you had somebody who was no. watching you no and, <laughs> and but, but after w- after we started the filming you know i i back to w- went back to israel and then i checked the instagram and she You talk about going to the voice to audition for the yeah, voice said yeah. okay it's time to go to New Orleans it was like a year of going back back and forth and um, it was uh, a real ch- challenge but in terms of editing I must say that this in film in this film it's really uh, was totally different experience from other things that I did I felt that their karma were, went to this film and I was like going to New Orleans put you know the material on On the timeline just need to clean it up a little and the scenes were there and slowly slowly it become a film Samantha what did he tell you why, why he was showing up and why he wanted to film you well <laughs> his wife um, hit me on hit me y'all uh, y'all know what that means y'all know what that means right hit me on Facebook huh okay <laughs> he hit me on Facebook and said that um, he wanted to do a documentary about youtubers and And I was like, okay, why not? You only get one chance in life. Why not try this? I never tried it before. And so he came down, like he said. I met him in his hotel lobby, Rest in Peace to Prince. That's a song of his. You know that song? Mm-mm. Okay, it's D- Nicky. But anyway, so I met him in his hotel lobby. We, um, we, um, we talked. I felt in sleep, like calm with him. Like I can be, at that moment, I felt like um, it was time to tell my story. Like at that moment with him, he was the one. So we went to open mic night, and from there he just kept coming back. But in his initial visit, it was, his mission was a documentary about YouTubers. But it just slowly narrowed down to me and Cootie, man. Did, after a while, did you forget the camera was there? Yeah, because it was just one camera and one guy. And he wasn't like, well, when he did close-ups, he was very close. But when he did, like, just regular filming, he was, like, way, like, a fly on the wall. He just wanted to keep out of my space, and he did. And so after a while, I, become, I forgot he was there. Like, I just would go around my, my, my normal day and didn't notice him until, like, he scared me when I look over. And I'm like, <laughs> like oh, he's still there. So, yeah. And, Ido, f- for, to get backing and financing and distribution for this, how hard was this? Was it something that you said, I can't describe it to you, I have to show you? It's something first uh, the fact that I uh, film by myself and editing it's, it gave me a lot of uh, you know um, I, um, how should I say freedom in, in the be- at least in the beginning to check and try things and and that's what I did and after um, the first uh, visit in uh, in uh, New Orleans that I, I came back with such a strong feeling and I edited something and then I, I came with the, my enthusiasm to like the Israeli team Tele- TV channel and the foundation and they really went to go wanted to go with me with on this journey and it started to it was easier than other projects I think they also fell in love with them and uh, how different is this from other work that you have done I so used to suffer when I do films you know <laughs> in, in my documentaries <laughs> and most of them I'm very depressing and like you know about Israel one of them was very political and it was it's in this this was totally different experience there was something so you know I really enjoyed you know also the visits and also the editing I was editing and the song started I knew that I need to do a cut but I cont I you know till the end the song is ended ending I was just listening it was really something that usually when film is finished it's kind of relief and like people I I and people are very happy I'm kind I'm a little sad at its end this j- journey of this filmmaking because I really I really loved it that's a very rare compliment uh, but it's not ending we're still you know I, and I, ca- I can also say that something that I really felt in this film and I believe you know that that um, music and creating there is power of healing and and it's for me it came in time in my life that it's really how should I say it's it was big thing for me well Samantha in your YouTube videos you were so honest about everything including being molested as a child because you weren't thinking this was going to go viral to, to use the word that, that millions of people would not only hear your voice but see these stories and Did that make you feel differently about doing the videos after the fact? No. Like, 
I, you know, when I, when I, it's just me at that moment, it's just me and my phone. You don't think beyond the phone. You just think this is going here. You push publish and I left it alone. But after, like a little bit after when the documentary was like, I'm like this, oh God, oh God. Then I just like, oh, well, it is what it is. Like I, you know, it was like a moment of, oh my God. Like I like set up in bed and was like, oh my God. But after that, it was like, hey, this is life, and people go through this every day. It's not just me. So I want people to know that it's reality, and everybody's not like a millionaire, and people suffer, and people struggle, and people right now, there's somebody being abused right now. So like, there is abuse, and I want people to realize that. And what did you think when you saw his footage of her listening to your mashup? Uh, that was that was really amazing and touching for me. Now you know. Now when I watch the film, I just kind of don't feel anything anymore because I watched it so many times. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, the real the real moments were when he came back and showed me the the you know the scenes where she discovered and all all the powerful scenes in the film. It was really touching for me. You said you didn't really want to let the film go, but were there surprises? Did the film take you places that you hadn't expected it to take you? I think uh, the surprises, um, it's, it's the reactions of the of audience. It's something that we were traveling for uh, in Europe and here, and the reaction was re really um, very emotional. It's, I'm very excited about it. And people may respond to your personal story as much as they do to your music. You know, a lot of people approach me. A lot of people that are like they're in the they're in that wounded state that I was in, and I know where they are. And so I don't like sometimes you feel I feel like my hands are bound because it's a process they have to go through by themselves. Like I can talk to you all day and night about my struggle and what I went through, but you have your own trauma. But it's beautiful that I'm able to talk to them. People I talk to for like hours, I sit and talk to them, and they're emotional. And I want to help them and bring them out of it. So it's a beautiful thing when people embrace you and tell you, I'm a survivor too, and let you know, okay, it's okay. We're not victims, we're survivors. Before we let you go, can you sing for us? <laughs> Sitting on the windowsill, staring at the rain outside, asking you why you don't love me at all, babe. I'm stuck in the same place, a million miles away from the truth, but it's in front of your face. And yeah. please thank the panel. Rock sauce.